I have many happy memories of standing out there at about 4.30 in the evening, dust coming on, freezing, and waiting for those short-eared owls to show themselves. Bird watching is an art, a skill, and a gamble. This is a winter raptor excursion, and the people that we have are out here looking for um, whatever we might find. Saturday's participants might find hawks, eagles, and ravens, but they're also hoping to see owls. A bit of a challenge seeing as most species are nocturnal. Norman Smith directs the Mass Audubon Blue Hills Trailside Museum in Milton. He's been studying birds for 30 years, and he's particularly good with owls. <laughs> Just like a rock. <laughs> Both children and adults love these birds of prey and they show up in movies, cartoons, and children's books. Owls have been around for 60 million years and scientists have only recently started to understand them better. Aeronautics engineers are now studying their wing design and other researchers are studying their complex calling systems. This one came from Martha's Vineyard. Um, it was found in a, a nest box, and the mother, I think, was eaten by a raccoon. Yes. Though this barn owl hasn't had the best of luck, most owls are voracious creatures, and the biggest ones hover near the top of the food chain. Owls are one ear is down low on one side and up high on the other side, so they can turn their head and triangulate and pinpoint where sounds are coming from. They fly silently when they flap their wings. You know, you can't really hear anything at all. It's, it's, they have fringing on the outside of their feathers, so the air actually goes through them when they flap their wings as opposed to, you know, bouncing off it like a, um, another raptor, like a hawk. There's the nest on the top of that tree, and you can see the females sitting on there. You can see her a little ear tuft sticking up. Um, one nest that I had, we set up a tower on it, and they brought in a pheasant, uh, a number of ducks, um, a small raccoon, a woodchuck, two cats, and a toy poodle. <laughs> so, again, so, in th these things here, so a lot of them don't survive because if every great horned owl chick that was hatched survived, there would be virtually nothing left in the woods. I'm, I'm owl obsessed. <laughs> You're owl obsessed? Owl obsessed. <laughs> I, I think it's just it's, it's something, they're majestic and just incredibly powerful and beautiful birds. Super. Super experience. It's definitely worth the whole day, the trip, just to see this one bird. If we didn't see any other hawks or anything else the whole day, it'll still be a great day. <laughs> yeah. But along with their great horned owl sighting, Norman's participants did see a whole lot more. A feasting red-tailed hawk. No, it's not a buffalo head. It's a red-breasted oh again. <laughs> a couple of eagles and a mating raven. Did you see that, Nancy? A little quick cut. <laughs> <laughs> it happens really quickly. It does. Very, very quick. Even Jeans if you don't exercise. see anything, you're always, you always learn something because right. people, other people tell you what they've seen or how to identify something or whatever, or like Norm always has so many stories and such a wealth of knowledge to share. I mean, if you see something, it's a real bonus and it's a delight, but if you don't, that's okay too. No question. Oh, well, we know nothing. <laughs> you know hardly anything. <laughs> no, I, we're learning stuff, new stuff all the time. I think we, you know. Yeah don't know as much as we think we know. They can hear, you know, great gray owls hearing mice under two feet of snow. Well, how do they do that? I haven't got a clue. For all that scientists do know, Norman says it's only the beginning. But that's the exciting thing. You know, we're finding new diseases all the time, we're finding new cures all the time, we're finding new things about birds all the time, and we're finding new things about the world each and every day, and that's what makes it exciting. Shorty and owl over here. <laughs> <laughs>